Hi there. I'd like to welcome the uh, Columbus City officials and Columbus City Council. It's a shame that Mayor Coleman couldn't be here, but I think that you'll enjoy our proposal. Um, <clears throat> we are the Appalachian uh, Culture Committee. I am the president, Tim Rayner. Uh, this is the treasurer, Cal Thompson, vice president, Cassie Great, and festival coordinator, Amy Gadd. <clears throat> so our mission statement <coughs> is to provide a means of educational, social, and cultural awareness of the rich Appalachian history in Ohio with the purpose of supporting the families of Appalachian descent in Central Ohio. Why the need? <clears throat> Some of you might be asking, why do we need an Appalachian festival in Columbus? Well, did you know there are already festivals in Winchester, Scottstown, Cincinnati, Athens, and Portsmouth? There are tons of them in Southern Ohio and with 32 of 88 counties being Appalachian, you would think that there could be more in Northern or even Central Ohio, especially with uh, Columbus and Franklin County being only two counties away from the designated Appalachian counties in, in Pike, Ross, or Hawking. And <coughs> considering the Columbus population versus the Cincinnati population, the difference between 820,000 and 300,000 people, it's, it's really a big difference and I think that Columbus would be a huge selling point for an Appalachian festival. And also, for those of you who keep up with the Columbus Dispatch, you may have seen in late November, early December, the foundation of Appalachian Ohio, which was founded in 1998, uh, started this, this task called Leadership 100. And basically, what they wanted to do was raise money specifically for Appalachian family and needs in Ohio. And within the year, they raised $3.4 million just for Appalachian culture and family. And with this happening so recently, we think that it would really be a big benefit. And I think a lot of people could get behind the need for an Appalachian festival, specifically in Columbus. <clears throat> now, obviously, there's, they're putting some problems with this. And the uh, main problems are uh, stereotypes, fundraising, and uh, non-awareness. Uh, not awareness to one's own culture. So our solution was to uh, bring the festival into the city and it would bring, uh, bring in revenue and community engagement through a better education and Appalachian culture uh, that has been forgotten. All right, so now we will go into the parts individually that we're working on for the festival starting with the logistics and basically the the rest of the powerpoint presentation is to give you a sense of not only all of the tasks that we would need to go through in order to make this a real festival but to give you an idea and a sense of the community that we could bring in the entertainment the the performers to really give you an idea in your head of what this could look like um, so generally speaking we would want the festival to be held in goodale park for the weekend we believe that it really resonates with what we're trying to accomplish, given that Goodale Park is the oldest park in Ohio. Uh, it is also one of the oldest parks in the United States. And with the rich history that Goodale Park provides, we think that bringing it back to Appalachian culture and kind of the origins of Ohio would really help. Uh, we would also need to care of parking. To take care of parking, uh, we would need to take care of, of the maps and where everybody would be whether it be performers or workshops or programs, event permits, rental needs, park needs. We would need to make sure that there was cleanup for Goodell Park, electrical and generator needs for the vendors, and of course, resident approval. And then there's the budget. Obviously, you have your income and your expenses. Uh, tickets, we were thinking $10 for adults and then two for students, and maybe do like a $5 for seniors and stuff like that. And then concessions, we would uh, get volunteers to run that, and we'd have to actually get permits to make the food and sell the food from the FDA. They'd have to come in and check what we were making the food on and all that stuff and make sure that we were um, making everything quality and, and then selling it at a fair rate. And then parking. <clears throat> parking is um, something that would be limited because the park is only so big, so the park is, uh, you know, the park's only going to be able to to park so many people so we were thinking that we could talk to the city since the park is in downtown and then we could maybe rent some of this some of the um, 
parking garages that they have and maybe give them like a percentage of like what we make off of them or whatever. And then obviously <clears throat> for the expenses, the rental of the site, I mean, um, when I was researching it, it's kind of hard to find what a park to rent it for a three-day weekend, an entire park. What I came up with was about $33,000 to rent the park for an entire weekend and have a festival on it. And um, security, I mean, I am in research. I know that a lot of the, when you rent a park, you get the security and like they throw in their police force. They, you pretty much pay for that in the rental. And then uh, utilities, obviously electric, gas, water, and garbage. Uh, for the electric, you'd, the, the city would obviously give us a bill for how much electric the different uh, booths and vendors are gonna use, and then we would give that to them, and then they would pay that all separately. And then we would probably just bundle the gas, water, and garbage together, and then pay that after the uh, festival is over. And then entertainment, um, Amy has that under control, but we would just uh, pretty much pay them a flat rate for however many nights they play, or how many hours they play. Uh, advertising, we, we, you know, we want to get on the TV, the radio, the um, social media, all that kind of stuff. And then we, in the budget budget committee, we uh, sectioned off, you know, ten to twelve thousand dollars to uh, pay for that and whatever we want to do with advertising. And then license is the big thing um, to do these kind of things. It's going to cost about fifteen fifteen hundred dollars to uh, license a festival under us. In terms of vendors that we would have at our festival, all of them need to have some sort of educational value. Uh, we would not want to bring in just anybody to, to sell things to the population, to do something that isn't going to raise awareness of the many facets of Appalachian culture that we have. So we're going to have an application process, and we really want them to be authentic to who we are, what Appalachian culture is about, and hopefully from Ohio. Uh, we'd also need a health permit application, and. Some examples of people that we would have in mind would be bluegrass kettle corn, Johnson's country ham, really anything with ties to the Appalachian food culture. Um, we plan to have three different categories of activities throughout our um, festival. The first one would be a marketplace, which is a really informal setting where um, we would have people come in to sell their arts and crafts and baked goods. And this is a time where festival goers can just connect with um, the p individuals within the Appalachian community. And um, our second category would be programs, and this is a more formal setting, a lot more um, observation-based, so people can go listen to music or watch dance and film screenings and storytelling. Um, here, participants, they can choose like to be more like observant, or they can choose to like go up and speak to, we'll have um, booths set up for the musicians and the dancers, so people can, um, try to learn more about the background of the music or where they can get involved in dance studios to continue the culture. Our third category is workshops. And here, this will be very interactive and um, where people can go, they can learn about maybe like skills and trades that their ancestors maybe practiced, like quilting and woodworking. And um, they can also make their own games and maybe try out their hand at storytelling with like a round robin storytelling. Um, we would also have like a coal mining photo exhibit because a lot of people, whether or not they know it, they have Appalachian ties and um, a lot of people have um, ancestors who worked in the coal mines. So they, there they can um, get a glimpse into the window of the past of their family. Um, so all these three different categories will help to build personal connections and people can um, create uh, their own experience really based on how much they want to participate. Um, if we would a were able to move forward the, with this project, we would send an invitation to Andrea Buckner. She was the star of the documentary, A Long Journey Home. And she would teach dances, and she would also perform music for the entirety of the festival. Um, other people that we would invite would be Carol Griffith, Frank Hobbs, Petra Kaulakova, and they all are artists who have displays of Appalachian art. And um, they would also have workshops to teach art. Another person would be Sylvia Miller. Um, she is an expert in spoon playing, which is a type of music genre that kids could enjoy. 
Um, Joanne Lessing would present a history of the folk music and the afterlife of the American tradition of group singing, and she touches on the spiritual and um, bluegrass music. And George Ella Leon is a poetry is a poet, and she would present her poetry. Um, we would also have bands throughout the festival, and they are listed on the PowerPoint. And we would uh, ex Band, uh, expand our um, social media <laughs> with Twitter, Facebook, Tumblr, Instagram, Gmail account if anyone needs to contact us. We'd also have a website. Um, at the website, we would have an application for our volunteers. We would be looking for anyone of any age, including college students. Um, once they filled, filled out the application, then we would be able to place them where they would fit best, considering their likes. And our hashtag would be Appalachia Columbus. So in conclusion, we would, we would really want the support of the City Council of Columbus and, and you guys, the officials, to move forward with this project, specifically with Goodale Park as our location, especially being so close to Franklinton, just two, two and a half miles away, uh, which is a known town or city of Appalachian culture. Uh, this would be an Appalachian Culture Committee sponsored festival and the main points that we want to hit on are promoting under-respected culture because so many people in Ohio specifically are from Appalachian culture and a lot of times they just don't realize it. We would like to bring in revenue uh, specifically to donate to families of Appalachian culture and needs. We like to break the stereotypes and show how multifaceted the culture actually is and how many different incredible things there are and increase awareness generally of how much of Ohio is part of the Appalachian Foundation and Roots. transportation works sometimes, sometimes it doesn't. It would be very hard for me to get to your place and pay 60 bucks to just get in and then parking and then say my kids want something to eat or drink. <coughs> they probably would, you know. Yeah. Just a thought. Sorry. Negative. <laughs> <laughs> well, we could have shuttles to help with that would be great. And then, but, and then a car. Like we could have family passes too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you prove you're from Appalachia, you can breathe. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or you could be a volunteer and just get into the park. There you yeah. go. <laughs> so after uh, living in Franklin for six years and working there, um, one of the one of the biggest challenges whenever organizing community events is that many of our neighbors uh, don't have easy access uh, to the web in the same way that we do, or the interface through smartphones. So a lot of times, for instance, recently with the West Franklinton plan that was developed, many of our neighbors would never get word about what was happening. Um, it was only connected through Facebook, Twitter, so it would just draw a crowd like myself, young professionals, late 20s, early 30s crowd, or those from outside of the neighborhood that had investment. So I wonder if you guys have any ideas about how you could break through that barrier with our neighbors that wouldn't have access, to easy access to the web, or don't have a social presence in the same way maybe many of us do that came from a middle class background. Well, a lot of it was said um, in our actual proposal, in, in the, the typed out part of it, but the social media is only really just the, the, a good part of what we do. It's just a base, because <clears throat> That is our biggest way of attracting a lot of people quickly. But also in our proposal, we wrote out uh, advertising on, on billboards and in newspaper ads, magazines, things of that nature. So there's a, there's a much broader spectrum of what we would want to do for advertising. What is that Franklin newspaper called again? Just saying. I mean, the South Side, same thing. Yeah. You know, they have their own little, they have their own paper as well, but but they have the same issues. You know. Oh, um, I do have a personal question. Um, do you have any more information about the 
festival in Portsmouth? <laughs> like where it is, any of that? The one in Cincinnati is really neat. Yeah, you, you, can you can find out. You can find the website. From, yeah, I mean that's what I'm saying. I'm from yeah. Portsmouth. I don't know of. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> that's that's not even possible. So I'm just trying to find out. Like I just want to know. You can, you can you can you can Google it and it'll come up with their website for it. Yeah, a, a lot of them showed up and just went away. The oldest one we talked to Ron Simmons, who's the president of like the biggest Appalachian festival probably in the United States or close to it. It's been going on for 46 years, so it kind of dwarfs out all the other ones. But he said that the biggest problem is that most of them are just really small, and so they join on to another group. And when the two of them combine, the other one gets so much bigger that it just kind of eats up the small Appalachian Festival. So they might still have a website up, but not actually continue it. I was actually just gonna ask you about the one in Dayton that <laughs> is getting phased out too. So I didn't know if like, you guys have looked into like maybe why that's happening to help keep that from happening to yours. It's mainly just awareness. Also, the one the one in Cincinnati is just so much bigger than all the other ones that it's not really necessary. But I really couldn't tell you other than just general awareness or a lack of wanting to appreciate the culture. So it means funding not just for startup but Sustained. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.